to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. That was my granddad, Uncle Raymond. Right. Uh, we ca- even though he's my granddad, we call him Uncle Raymond. Mm. And uh, that was some of his friends as well, Uncle Raymond's friends, Barry. Right. He's not planning to release that, is he? Uncle no, no, Raymond? it's just a lark no, it's about. it's just for fun, because it's, te- it's very dated sounding. It sounds like it's from the olden dates. Yeah, it's from the olden dates. They get together in the shed. Yeah. And how, how old is he, your granddad? He's over 78. Right. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, they're all 78s. How nice of you to play it. On, and they hang together. The air. I told him I would, because he loves the show. Yeah, yeah. He listens to the show, mm. and uh, he thinks it's a lot of fun, and that's he nice. said, you know, me and some of the chaps have done a new song. Mm. Maybe you could play that on your programme. He sounds more like the Icelandic goblin. Yes, he... Well, yeah, he from he, the other week. He has come from Iceland sometimes. He goes to Iceland sometimes. <laughs> Really? Along with Mum, yes. And uh, he's You're back. You're lying that this whole thing's a lie. That was Bono and U2 with Get Your Boots On, the first single from U2's new album, No Line on the Horizon. Oh my goodness, you're right. It does sound exactly like un- my Uncle Raymond's really? stuff, though, which is I very good. I don't know who should be more ashamed. Hey, good morning, listeners. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, back after... How long have we been away for? Two weeks? Two weeks, yeah. Two yeah, weeks. very happy to be back. Thank you very much for listening, especially if you're listening live to this very early part of the show, which is, I always feel, a very special little nook. It's the VIP zone. Exactly. That's for early right. adopters. Right. You know, people who are still half asleep. Yeah. Radio it's, mavens. Exactly. It's kind of a surreal f- flange of an area. And what a lot has happened just as soon as we went away. I mean, we were talking about this in the pre-record that we did that was broadcast, uh, not last week, but the week before. What, about the world changing massively? Uh, but, uh, yeah, speculating about what might happen while we were away and all the things that we would not be mm. able to talk about. Mm. But now we can, and we can cover them all in lurid detail. Obama being sworn in. I mean, oh. some of these we won't talk about, obviously. Jonathan Ross returning. Mm. Did you uh, watch his show when he came back? No, I was in America. Of course you were. Mm. Uh, the Ice Age has begun. Mm. Missed that as well. In England, we're still going on. Yeah, uh, it was melting by the time I got back. There's still lots of snow lying around everywhere, and it's going to be bad this week as well. Is it? I hope so. Yeah. I feel like I've missed out. I want a rerun. You're going to get some. Uh, Thatcher, Carol Thatcher, racist tirade. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, insane comments yeah. about our yeah. glorious PM. And, of course, Christian Bale. We'll cover some of those topics a bit later on, won't we? Yes. <laughs> and uh, we have great music for you. We have a special guest in the studio this week that we'll tell you about later on. We're going to resolve Danny Wallace's uh, song wars. What's da- what was Danny's sidekick called? It's Very what- nice chap. Gromit. It's Wallace and Gromit. What was his name? The fella... Rich Glover. Rich, Rich Glover. Glover. Did you hear them at all? No, I haven't heard them yet. They were very good. Oh. I only listened to the beginning, just, just, just to keep up with things. But his sidekick, Rich, was, uh, was posher than both of us combined. He if, affects if... a certain extra poshness when he's on the radio, I think. What, the sidekick? Yeah, Richard. You, do you think? Yeah, I know Richard. I've, really? I've, I've acted and... He sounds posher than you and I swapped in a matter transference pod with the Queen. Well, he does a very good impression of, what's his name, Moore, Kenneth Moore. Right. That's one of the things he does really? when he's doing stand-up. And it's very funny indeed. Yes, he's, he kind of talks like this, doesn't he? He's almost mm. like Prince mm. Charles too, sometimes. Too posh to move. <laughs> yeah. As if he's so classy, he's bedridden. He's a very nice guy. And it was a pleasure to be stood in by him. I'm not saying he's not nice. Well, what are you saying then? I'm saying he's posher than us. Well, which you're is jealous. Exciting. No, I'm pleased. <laughs> <laughs> that there's someone posher than us. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear, they did songs about who was better, Adam or Joe. I heard the songs. Uh, I'm telling the listeners. Yeah. If they didn't know. And we're going to hear them later on. I'm excited to hear that. We'll be Mm. doing that within the next hour, I think. But now let's play some music. This is La Rue with Quicksand. Yes, that's La Rue with Quicksand. I was hoping that might be Lady Gaga. Have you heard about Lady Gaga? Everybody's heard about Lady Gaga. Have you heard Lady Gaga? Yeah. I only heard her this morning. What's she like? Uh, well, I thought you'd heard her. Yeah, but just talking, just in the street. Right. Not actually singing. Uh, she's vocoded quite heavily, which I was a bit disappointed by. I thought a new... She's supposed to be sort of taking Madonna's crown, right? Oh, is she? She's risen up through the New York clubs. Mm. She's done her time properly, you know. She's kind of a performance artist type. Mm -hmm. I thought she'd be able to sing, (laughs) or at least give it a try, but she's heavily vocoded. Uh, are you excited about her? 
Uh, well, I'm very old. It's hard to get excited about anything now except comfy chairs. Lady Gaga, it's a good name though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Gaga, goo goo. Yeah. You know, pitching it quite simple for, the, the, for the toddlers <laughs> at the baby market. <laughs> Lady Gaga. <laughs> what would be a simpler name for that? Mr. Mr. Poo Poo? <laughs> toddlers would like him. That's going to be my stage name. Mr. Poo Poo. Yeah. Well, I think you'll do very well. <laughs> Thank you. There's a quote from Lady Gaga um, from The Guardian in Private Eye's the Suits Gar Guardian. Cor Corner this week. Uh -huh. You know Suits Corner in Private Eye? Right. Quote, Lady Gaga says, I went to a lovely school and I got an incredible education. And I actually think that my education is what sets me apart because I'm very smart. She taps her head. <laughs> smart. <laughs> Quote, I don't know that my schooling was, condu was conducive to wild ideas and creativity, but it gave me discipline, drive. They taught me how to think. I really know how to think. She searches for an example. If I decide to make a coat red in the, s in the show, it's not just red, she explains. I think... Is it communist red? Is it cherry cordial? Is it ruby red? Is it apple red? Or the big balloon red? I mean, there's so many different kinds of red. And so you have to say, well, what are we trying to say in this scene? Is it a happy red? A sad red? A lace red? A leather red? A wool red? It's like there's so many components to making a show and making art, and my school taught me how to think that way. That's good school. Where did she go to school, I wonder? What's big balloon red? Oh, it's, uh, it's very red. You know, it's like the balloons they used to have for Milton Keynes. Was it Milton Keynes? Does she mean big top red? No. No, bl big, big red balloons. Big, big balloon red. Yeah, big balloon. Do you not familiar with big balloon red? Well, I red? haven't been educated to the level of Lady Gaga. I don't know what that means. I mean, I think it's fair enough to cite big balloon red. It's like fire engine red. You know, it's a vivid... No, fire engine red, red yes. Big balloon red. <laughs> Big balloon red. Same sort red. of thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, clown nose red? That would have been acceptable as well. Yeah. Just not big balloon red. Spanked bottom red. I wish I was as clever as Lady Gaga. I like people who say, you know, the thing about me is that I'm really intelligent. <laughs> I love it when people call attention to how it's intelligent like they are. It's like when Sylvester Stallone started wearing <laughs> glasses and doing oil paints. Yeah, that but kind at, of thing. at least... Intelligence as a career move kind of thing. He never actually came out and said, I suddenly discovered that I'm very intelligent. He pretty much did. More or less. But it's, it's acceptable if you start changing your image. I mean, it's barely mm. acceptable, fair enough. But uh, when people actually say, you know, I have a very high IQ. My IQ is unusually high. Mm -hmm. You just think, well, it's not quite high enough that you... You realise that's an idiotic thing yeah, to say. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. Should we have some more music? Yeah, will it be Lady Gaga? No, unfortunately not. Uh, this is probably Lady Gaga's... What radio station is this? Great, great granddad. I know, this is slightly old. Uh, and it's more Van Morrison. I was, you know, I played some Van Morrison the other day. But this is not Ringworm or any kind of contractual obligation, Van Morrison. But it's a lovely slice of early Morrison called Spanish Rose. I've got a mouthful of carrot, Joe. Can you fill for a little bit? Yeah, that was Van Morrison. Uh, what was that one called? Spanish Rose? Yeah. Yeah, that was very nice. That was Adam's free play. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, we were away for the last two weeks, uh, and last Saturday, Danny Wallace filled in uh, and did a very, very good job, and did uh, they did their own song wars, didn't they? That's right. Now, I got quite upset about that. I was working in America, and I um, woke up in the middle of the night, and someone <laughs> sent me an email saying, oh, um... Uh, Danny Wallace and his friend are going to do Song Wars. And I suddenly felt that they were stealing our segment. Right. I felt slighted. So I fired off quite an angry email, didn't I, Ben? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and it said, I CC'd you as well. It said, look, I'm quite annoyed. Uh, does anyone else feel that Wallace is stealing our segment? There was something else I was annoyed about that was really stupid as well. What was it, Ben? Surely you've been scarred by it. Oh Wednesday. yeah, no, it was the fact that um, the it was not possible for people oh, to vote to about our previous yeah. improvised song yeah, wars. Yeah, we did improvised song wars the other week and they hadn't been put up on the website. And we'd mentioned in the podcast that we were going to, or in the show we were going to do it. Anyway, these were very silly, trivial things, but I got quite angry about them and fired off some furious emails. I would say that it was justified for you to be slightly miffed about the improvised song wars thing, mm -hmm. because yours was so good. But that, in a way, I was pleased mm -hmm. about it, because I didn't want people to vote for, for that, because yeah, mine was yeah. just barely coherent. Yeah. When I improvised my song, you came out with something really quite inspired. Yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest anyway. Just, yeah. Just to make it clear that I don't, I don't really feel angry about those things. <laughs> you can't down there. you know what, now that I've heard Danny and, and Rich's yeah. song wars, uh, the, the I'm angry box. again. The glove box. <laughs> Why are you angry? Uh, because they're so good. Yeah. And I'm threatened. Now, these songs are about us. Do we know who picked which... which yeah, Danny went for you yeah. and Rich went for me. And, uh... 
we, we can't obviously play the full songs again but they did they play them live in the studio they had a guitar and they played them live did they they i hope they did they sang live they sang live over backing tracks mm. and did they you were in the studio at the time were you ben yes did they have the lyrics written down yes they, they actually wrote them down <laughs> 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 i haven't heard these joe is uh talking well, they're, about the they're very that... very freeform mm. they've um you know i don't want to sound pompous or anything <laughs> but they don't seem to know any they didn't seem to know anything about us yeah if i was writing a song about someone i would have done a search on uh wikipedia but you see very few people with lo um, proper jobs and lives are bothered. willing to spend three days writing a song for a radio show apart well, from clearly. us <laughs> because your song uh danny wallace's song about you just w went along the lines of adam adam he's brilliant it's true adam he's brilliant that's true uh it may have said you had a beard he's got a beard that's also true yeah and that was pretty much it that's fa factually accurate then. then rich's song about me uh it missed the brilliant the stuff about me being brilliant oh, i'm sorry it just went joe cornish joe cornish he's really really tall that's true uh it referred to me as a sidekick which i found demeaning <laughs> And then it said, he's tall, Cornish, I don't know much about him, he's tall. And then it sort of tapered off. So this explains your <laughs> obvious latent fury about him yes. earlier in the show. I, I'm not, it's not latent. I told you, I'm, I, they've, I, they've made me angry again. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I just think that not only have they stolen our segment, oh but they've goodness. covertly insulted me. He called him a sidekick. Uh, that's, that's pretty terrible. harsh and they withheld the brilliant as well well let's find out who won now and we're going to hear the winning song all over again well i, I think it's screamingly obvious who's won because you know rich's one only just constituted a song <laughs> <laughs> didn't really have a melody uh richard gets 43 percent, but danny wins with 56 percent. so quite close and, and danny and rich i don't mean to be just in case you're listening yeah i doubt it but if you are listening i don't mean to insult you at all it's terrific of you to fill in for us and do those songs triff uh, it was really <laughs> terrific. It's just that, um... Just don't ever just don't look ever... at me and talk to me again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if you're going to sing a song about me, you've got to make it really flattering. There was an awful lot of other impressive stuff they could have said about you as well. I know. And, uh, they, they just went, it. They just went for it. tall yeah. and withheld the brills. Anyway, let's hear Danny Wallace's song about Do me. Do we have to? <laughs> this is a story about two men. One is called Adam and is brilliant. The other is called Joe and he knows Adam. But really, this song is about Adam, the brilliant one I said about. Joe's goodness almost, like he's quite tall, but being quite tall is not the same as being the same size as Adam. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know a man named Adam and he knows another little man named Joe And together they got together and pulled out a digital radio show But enough about Joe, that's all anyone knows Cause the whole world rolls around Adam He's Adam, he's Adam Rhymes include Saddam and Madam uh, And Scradam because Adam, oh, Adam Buxton, more compact than his sidekick, but only 5% less buxom. His work with the oboe really knows how to reach ya. He played a friendly teacher and son of Rambo, which was spelt wrong, but that's fine. He wasn't teaching spelling. That would have been a boring film, and it was brilliant, but only because of Adam, little Adam Buxton. Oh, madam, he's a madman. It is Adam. Sc uh, Scradam. <sighs> you see yeah yeah no i understand that the idea there would be that richard would have come back with an equally over the top flattering song about me you know well that wasn't that flattering i'm more compact than you mm. was the upshot well, of that you one you know we're both quite sensitive souls well <laughs> you're in trouble anyway with the basic <laughs> premise <laughs> but uh i don't know i feel nothing but bruised and i don't and think they you know what i think song. i think they were misusing the word sidekick i don't think they were using it to mean like the less important of a pair i think they were just meaning like you know i the don't other I, half. I don't i'm happy to be described as a sidekick but um it's just my other talents. Also, maybe they meant psychic. <laughs> maybe they meant I was <laughs> telekinetic, psychic. Yeah, yeah. maybe they did. Because you do have special mind powers. So that's not going to go on the overall thermometer score chart. Fundraiser, Blue Peter thermometer, is it? The uh, overall Song Wars score chart. No. 
No. They're not representing us. Now, that's in the past. Yeah. Isn't that's, it? that's a freak. It's an it's anomaly. History. Can we erase those <laughs> from the castle vaults? But a sincere thank you, though, to Richard Glover yeah. and to Danny Wallace yeah. for filling in for us. Yeah. Uh, lots of people came up to me in the week and said how good they were. And I had to have the conversation several times about, like, they weren't, they weren't like, better than us, were they? And they were like, well, they were quite good, <laughs> was, was what I well, heard. Well, that's so, a good thing, isn't yeah. it? Because we could maybe take more time off. That's right. And they could fill in and that will be all all right. Get the yes man in the glove box in. Exactly. Yeah. Right, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Here's a bit of M Ward right now. Ben, our producer, has made, um, we've got little information sheets that uh, tell us what we're playing and all that kind of thing. And this week, he's gone to town, he's got the colour photocopies, inserted little colour pictures in there and stuff. There's a picture of M Ward here. He looks like quite a sort of grumpy man, which doesn't surprise me, having heard some of his music. He's from Portland, Oregon. And uh, he's chosen to work under the name M. Ward, as this was his nickname when he was younger, it says on Ben's colourful fact sheet. He says it's more, Im it's more to the point and more formal. Mm. It's a fun fact. Thanks, Ben. Good job, man. And here's M. Ward with Never Had a Nobody Like You. Very good stuff. M. Ward with Never Had a Nobody Like You. This is Adam and Joe on Six Music from the BBC, the big British castle. And uh, it's almost 9.30 almost time for the news i want to be absolutely on the like dot of 9 30 when i introduce the news so i'm going to carry on talking as if i was on just a minute for another 10 seconds on the subject of apples i love apples my favorite kind of apple is the fuji apple which i believe comes from a part of japan it's delicious it's 9 30 time for the news so bob dylan with like a rolling stone this is adam and joe on bbc six music what that isn't bob dylan do you really think that's Bob Dylan? It says Bob Dylan like a Rolling Stone. That's the Rolling Stones with tumbling dice. Turn the page over, man. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the new pages you've got, got to turn over. Yeah. That was the Rolling Stones with tumbling dice. Come on, Granddad. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, now, listen, a couple of weeks ago, listeners, or in fact, I think it was three weeks ago, we had an email from a gentleman called Ollie Blake who wrote the following. Can I come on your show, please? Don't want to say anything. Just want to be there and feel the magic swirling around the studio. Whoosh. Thanks, Ollie Blake. Um, so we arranged for him to come into the studio, didn't we? But then that week he was ill. He claimed that he was ill. So we had him on the phone and he was only allowed to communicate by scratching the receiver. Yeah. And, and you're being very strict about this. Mm. Um, if it was up to me, I would sort of just let the guy speak and stuff. But you've been fairly hard line about the fact that he shouldn't make any yeah, noise. Yeah, yeah, Well, the email said, can I come on your show, please? I don't want to say anything. But why then do you think it's a good idea to get that person on a radio program? Because it's exciting <laughs> and more interesting. And, you know, some of the best radio is the theatre of the mind. Is it? Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's all like about... what? Which kind of program? When I did my training for Radio 4 for mm. the film show, they told me that it was actually quite good to describe visual stuff like a painting or a scene in a film. Yeah. Because radio's very good at painting pictures in people's heads. It's like, you know, reading a book mm -hmm. and imagining the characters. And it's apparently, I was told in my training, something that people sometimes avoid that they shouldn't. Right. And it's actually quite good. So I'm thinking that, that Ollie... Uh, if we treat him as a visual yeah. work rather okay. than an oral work, it might be exciting for the listeners. Because this week, the point of this whole thing is this week he is here in the studio. He's come all the way from the place where he lives, somewhere near Stansted. We could ask him where he lives, but of course, if he said anything, we would have to eject him immediately from the studio. Looking at him, I would say that he comes from near Stansted Hairport. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to look at Ollie, you can go on the Six Music website and look on the webcam. He's not facing the webcam at the moment, so you'll get who he is now. Stand up and face the webcam, Ollie. And, Please, Ollie. And don't move. It. And we explained to Ollie, you have to stand there for a while because it, uh, it uploads, it refreshes every few, uh, like 20 seconds or, or whatever. We explained to Ollie that we may well sort of tr treat him in a slightly demeaning or humiliating fashion just because of the nature of this interview that we're conducting. Can we call it an interview? Uh, it might turn into an interview, yeah um and he's he's fine with that he's signed a waiver and a disclaimer there's no way he's going to turn around in three weeks and suddenly claim that the evil bbc has has ruined his life it's possible <laughs> uh i would describe him as tall is he as tall as you joe no no not no quite. one's as tall as me no one's as tall as tall joe cornish he's pretty tall he looks as if he's from 
a the kings indie... of leon maybe right maybe Is that bad who oh, he's looking a bit he's looking a bit miffed well he looks a bit more devandra bernhardt than kings of leon he i would say he looks as if he doesn't know who that is he nearly spoke careful ollie uh he's more a kind of folk a beardy folky pixie man i i, I asked him to bring in some stuff uh, which he could communicate with, make some noises with. So he's brought in a wooden spoon and a frying pan. <laughs> so, um, Ollie, uh, w when we spoke to you on the phone, we had a uh, we had a one scrap, one knock for yes, two knocks for no thing going, right. didn't we? So, welcome to the studio, Ollie. <laughs> yes. There he is. <laughs> Are you enjoying your time here so far? That's yes, a yes, he is. Uh, what else can we ask him? Uh, is it, uh, is this exactly as you expected or is, uh, yes, is it uh, as you expected? <laughs> yes, it is. It's yes, exactly it is. as you expected. <laughs> um, and have you, you said you wanted to be here and feel the magic swirling around the studio. Can you feel any magic? Uh, took a bit of thinking about. He's thinking it? about the second one there, but. He's sticking with yes. That's good. That's the correct answer. That's the best way to go if you don't want to antagonise us unnecessarily. Ollie, it's very exciting to have you here. We're going to be speaking at you further in, uh, along in the programme. Well done. And, and remember, if you want to look at Ollie, then you can do so on the webcam. But How old would you say Ollie is? Me, I'd say he was about uh, 24, 25. Are you 25, Ollie? 21. 21. You're 21. He's 21. That's a good beard for 21. Yeah. He's got a beard. 21. Yeah. He's half our age. Is he? Pretty much. Not not really. Wow. Those are those couple of years Very count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's good. Well done, Ollie. Um if you're hoping to hear Ollie, then you're out of luck. Oh, he's making a giggling noise. He's, oh. You're not going to hear any Ollie throughout the show. Uh and Ollie, did you hear me referring to you as Ollie the Wally the, a few weeks back? Were you upset about that? No. I mean, he doesn't look like he means that, though. He was, he was, he was sort of grimacing. Face <laughs> as if maybe he was a little bit hurt. We'll be, we'll be back with Ollie later on in the programme. Uh, we're going to play some more music right now, though. This is Empire of the Sun, which actually could get us into a bit of Christian Bale news, couldn't it, after this? I say news. It's not exactly news, but we, we have... Uh, things to say about it or at least i do i'd like to hear your opinions about the whole thing mm, yeah, yeah but uh, this is the band empire of the sun who i believe used to be the sleepy jackson it's the guy from sleepy jackson isn't it and he's rebranded himself as a kind of more ridiculous version of the sleepy jackson and they they're all painted up and they look like aztec ponces they they look like a combination of mgmt and the mighty boosh and something even more ludicrous looking than that i haven't heard any of it yet though i'm interested to hear what walking on a dream sound like here it is there you go that's bob dylan again <laughs> with, with like a rolling like stone. a rolling stone brilliant all the big <laughs> dylan tracks here on bbc six music empire of the sun that was with walking on a dream the new weedy sound of the 80s back again for your listening pleasure i enjoyed that though yeah i like that as well that was very good this is adam and joe here on bbc six music now uh, unless you've been living under a rock uh, for the last week or so which actually a lot of people seem to have been i was in a large gathering of people last night i don't know if you've ever met any people joe they're amazing no. they're all different shapes sizes colors that kind of thing they have different opinions and clothes right and a surprising number of them were not aware of the fact that the actor christian bale uh had a tirade recorded right. last july what was this large group of people uh, the second time you've mentioned it this morning it was first time on on air well, they were just people, you know, party oh, people. A, part, a party, yeah, a yeah. dinner party. It was like a party. Mm. No, it wasn't a dinner party. It was like a birthday party. A thing. birthday yeah, party. Yeah. And I would say that certainly there was no one younger than me there. Right. So it was a fairly middle-aged gathering. Right. But they weren't, you know, and I, w I would imagine that most of our listeners here would, would have heard the Christian Bale tape. Mm. that has been circulated on the internet if you haven't heard it and you're listening to this program let me tell you that this was something that was recorded when christian bale was filming a film called terminator 4 what is it uh salvation salvation terminator 4 salvation directed by mcg who directed charlie's angels among other wonderful things and he was filming last july when this incident occurred and it was a stressful time for bale anyway wasn't it i think was it apparently so he was having lots of personal problems right. and one day his anger and his passion and intensity which serve him so well as an actor 
in his many roles, spilled over and was directed at a lighting guy. No, the DOP, wasn't it? Yeah. Who had uh, stepped into the, uh, like, and Christian Bale's eye line. So the camera was on Bale, but Bale, who was looking at the actor Bryce Dal Dallas Howard, um, could also see the DOP walking behind her, and, mm. and it kind of put him off his swing. Apparently, it was one of the most intense scenes of the film, which required, you know, Bale to be in a pitch of feverish excitement, mm. and it totally threw him off. So he went nuts at the DOP, who was called uh, Shane Hurlbutt, and the exchange was captured on uh, sound tape. <laughs> is that what they use in the movie yes sound tape well described uh, and 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 the tape has just recently been circulated it's a bit weird that suddenly it's just come to light like in the last week or so why would that be is someone trying to stitch him up i wonder Don't has know. there been speculation about that there hasn't actually that's a good question anyway you told me that he apologized recently because he really goes mad at this guy um and refuses to accept the dop's apology and just keeps on going on and on about how, what a useless amateur this guy is. Um, and in fact, I was thinking that maybe, because we can't play any clips, someone was saying they played a clip accidentally on the BBC, on BBC One yesterday morning on, on the breakfast show or whatever, and they forgot to edit out all the profanity, of which there is a great deal. But we're not going to take that chance. What we're going to do for you listeners is a special restaged version of the Christian Bale tirade. But this is how it would be if I was involved with it, I would think. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, imagine I'm on the set of Hot Fuzz. Let's face it, you've had your fair share of tirades on this program. Yeah, exactly. And I can, I can completely relate to Bale as an actor, as a fellow actor, and uh, as another actor who is very intense in many of his roles, mm. like I am. Mm. I completely related to Bale going nuts on Shale, Shane Hurlbutt's butt. And we're going to recreate this moment for you right now. Joe, you're going to play the part of Shane Hurlbutt. How do you want me to do it? The DOP. I don't know, man. You just feel your way through it. Okay. I mean, you've heard the tape, right? Yes, I have. He's fairly deferential in the, in the yep, tape. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, he's quite intimidated. And then, you, and then you're also going to be playing Bruce Franklin. Who's he, the producer? Uh, I don't know who he is. Uh, well, he's Bruce Franklin pops up uh, every now and again. And also McGee, you're going to be playing the director. I know who he is. Yeah, he's genius. Is he called McGee because he's a McGenius? Uh, yes. Yes. Correct. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so we, th the tirade begins right in the middle. Kick your flipping bum! Christian! Christian! No, I want you off the flipping set, you planet! Christian, I'm sorry. No, no, don't just be sorry. Think for one flipping second. What the flip are you doing? Are you professional or not? Yes, I am. No, no, don't... Wh what? Do I flipping walk around Christian, and... Christian! No, no, no! Shut the flip up, Bruce! No, no! Don't shut me up! I'm not shutting you up. Uh, well, don't! Yeah, am I gonna walk around then and rip your flipping lights down in the middle of a scene? Then why the flip are you walking right through ah ta 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 like this in the background? I mean what the flip is it with you? Why what don't you flipping understand? Have you got any flipping idea about hey, it's flipping distracting, having someone walking up behind Bryce in the middle of the flipping scene, giving me a flipping you know, give me a flipping answer. What don't you get about it? Uh, I was looking at the light. Oh, good for you. Good for you. And, and how was it? Was it, was it, I hope it was flipping good because it's useless now, isn't it? Flip sake, man. I mean, you're an amateur. McGee? McGee, have you got any, have you got flipping something to say about this planetarium? I didn't see it happen. Well, somebody should be flipping watching and keeping an eye on him. Oh, fair enough. Well, you know, it's the second time, and he doesn't give a flip about what's going on in front of the camera. I'm trying to be flipping, doing a scene here, and I'm going, why the flip is Shane walking around there? What's he doing? You know, do you understand? My mind is not in the scene if you're doing that. Look, I absolutely apologise. I'm sorry, I did not mean anything well, by Well, stay it. off the flipping set, man, for flip's sake. Right, let's go again. Let's just take a minute. No, let's not take a flipping minute! Let's go again! You're unbelievable. You are unflipping believable. Number of times you're strolling around and flipping around in the background. I have never had a DOP behave like this. I mean, you don't flip and understand what it's like working with actors. That's what it is. That is what it is, man. I'm telling you. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. You would not have done that otherwise. No, look, what it is, I'm just looking at the light and making sure that you're not... <laughs> Right! This is when he kicks off. Is that real? Yeah, I accidentally fell off my chair there. <laughs> Kick off! Right! 
<laughs> kick off. I am going to flip and kick your flipping bottom if you do shut up for a second, all right? Do it one more flipping time. I ain't, I'm walking off this set if you're still hired. I am flipping serious. You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy, but 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 that don't flip and cut it when you're bull pooping and flipping around like this on the on the on the set. I ain't the one walking, all right. Let's get Tom and put this thing back on and let's go again. Seriously, man, you and me we're flipping done professionally. You flipping bottom. That was like Justin Lee Collins it's having little... some kind of a fit. Yeah, it's a little bit as if JLC was in his first movie role, which will happen at some point. And that was recreated. I just fell off my chair and hurt that my That was hand. so <laughs> dramatic. I got really into it. Got so overexcited. Because I can totally sympathise, you know. But, you know, Christian Bale is from Bournemouth. Wasn't he born in Bournemouth? Is he Welsh? No, he was born in oh, Bournemouth. And right. then brought up, I think, his parents divorced, so he was brought up half in uh, southern England and half in California. Yeah. So one of the funniest things about the actual recording is the way his accent goes all over the shop. Well, when did his accent become so Americanized? I think it was always <laughs> Americanized when he was a kid. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, because his parents were divorced and he was half brought up in America. But in Empire of the Sun, he's very it's English. Because he's, he's acting. He's pretending. <laughs> he's acting. Oh. He's playing an actual British child. So he changes his voice to adopt the part of the yeah. British person. <laughs> yes. That's how it works. That's how actors work. Right. Um, there we go. Well, that was extremely powerful. Adam performed that with such energy that he actually <laughs> came off his Fell chair off and injured my chair himself. And hurt my hand. I think we should have a little bit of music. This is a free choice uh, from me. This is Dudley Perkins with Testing Me. Pretty well done. So little session there from the Ravenettes. They were playing in the hub for Gideon Co. on the 15th of July 2005 mm. and that track was called Love in a Trash Can. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music and we are joined in the studio by our silent guest Ollie a.k.a. Ollie the Wally. Ollie, now you witnessed that extraordinary piece of theatre <laughs> that happened there with Adam doing the, the restaging the Christian Bale outburst. I was saying that I pitched it too high. I wanted to... The whole point of doing it was... We're, we're not doing it again. ...was that it was supposed to be a bit more pathetic than that, but I went right. in too hard. Right. And I, I think I've broken my hand. Let's, <laughs> let's let Ollie be the judge of that. Ollie, do you think that was a, that was a successful piece of radio? I mean... Hang on, it's a long question. <laughs> it's going to be quite a complicated question that's going to require a yes or no answer. Do you think that was a successful piece of, of radio? And, and do you think um, when Adam fell off the chair, how did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> you can tap out a yes. rhythm if you want. Oh, ooh, that's interesting. So that's, it's confused. It's a sort of yes and no which meant that you were confused by the whole thing, which is, I think, a fair representation of probably the majority of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> None of my grand plans ever will work out. No, a lot of them do. You can't, you can't win them all. I thought it was good. I went in too hard. It was good. If there's any nurses listening that can treat a sprained or broken hand, I would really appreciate uh, your assistance. Uh, let me further describe Ollie for our listeners, <laughs> <laughs> just to shift the emphasis onto him for a second. Yeah. You know who he reminds me of, and I was trying to pin it down as soon as I met him, and I've mm. just suddenly remembered. He is like Naboo from the Mighty Boosh. Is he now? He's taller than Naboo. Yeah, he's taller, but he's definitely got something of the Naboo mm. about him. Mm. Na imagine Naboo with a beard and a bit more hair and a cool leather jacket and no turban. Mm. I would say that is a fair description of Ollie. Do you know what? When I look at someone like Ollie, who is a good-looking man, very well turned out, very, very well dressed, uh, I wonder what you were like before you settled on that look. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're a man who hasn't always looked as well-groomed and sort of as well-presented. Because you could have stepped off the cover of the NME or out of a thrusting new uh, indie band. Yeah. Right? If you scowled a bit. These more. are all compliments. Because Ollie's quite a, he's quite a smiley person, although he's been, we've been talking about our favourite films, and he revealed to me that he doesn't like feel-good films. In fact, his favourite film is 28 Days Later, which is by no means a feel-good film. So at the moment, Ollie's going through quite a dark phase, I think. Mm. Mm. Uh, we're catching him in, in, in his sort of evil phase. Mm. He's got his evil beard. He's, there's something of the cult leader about him, you know? A little bit of the Manson. Yeah. If he had a little swastika on his forehead. That would be a bad idea. Now you're just being rude. <laughs> Have you ever felt like forming a sort of murderous sex cult, Ollie? <laughs> Come on.
Yeah, that's yeah. the correct answer. That was, Who hasn't? That was two yeses. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play some more music right now. Here's Franz Ferdinand. They're so hot right now! Do you enjoy the new sound of Franz Ferdinand, Ollie? Oh, no. Come on. Come on. This is uh, what she came for. Franz Ferdinand, what she came for. You know, I'm not so sure about that one. I, w I was more of a fan of Ulysses than that one. Right. Ulysses. But, uh, you know, that was all good, clean fun from the mighty Franz Ferdinand there. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, Joe, the other day I was on the train uh, coming to London from Norwich, and I uh, went to sleep because I was very tired had uh, quite a sleepless night with the baby the night before and i uh nodded off and when i woke up there was a little piece of newspaper a scrap of newspaper thank god for that i thought you were going to say something else no <laughs> there was a little scrap of newspaper on the table next to me on the train mm. and someone had written adam on it with a little smiley face underneath and inside i opened it up and it said stephen exclamation mark or is it steven so the person had spelt it both ways ph and even question mark strange that because we've had a text message that reads as follows dear adam and joe i was in the queue at a shop in norwich station yesterday buying my journey sandwich when who should walk past me but adam buxton in the flesh as opposed to a hologram <laughs> or an actor playing you yeah Christine i was Bell. quite excited and then more so when i realized that we were in the same carriage I really wanted to say something, but didn't want to disturb Adam or draw attention by doing a Stephen. So, in spy-like ninja fashion, I wrote it on a little piece of paper and made my move. It was perfect as you were sleeping, Adam, when I walked past and I dropped it on your table. But did you get it? When you walked past me to get off the train, I wanted to say hello, or at least smile, but suddenly became very shy and worried that you might have felt a bit stalked. And then I wanted to give you a wave. And when you walked past the window, but <laughs> you must have gone the other way, as I never saw you again, and my elation quickly turned to deflation. I should have told you how much Jason, my fiancé, and I love the well, show. Jason. <laughs> how much it makes us laugh in our little hut in Chroma, but I didn't, and I'm so... And then the, the message ends. It must continue on a different message. We need to find that. We don't know message. the name of the person, even. Do you know what that sounds like to me, as as a trained psychologist? Yeah, Doctor Vallag. That um, Doctor Fisher This Vallag. anonymous uh, texter is in love with you, right? And would rather marry you than Jason. Jehan. And wanted to say that to you. Yeah. But was so consumed by love and and affection and passion and confusion and fury and all the things that one feels when you one's around <laughs> you, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> <laughs> that she was uh, unable to contain herself. You know what? To sort of rush off. I'm almost certain I know who the person is. What you 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 recall looking at them, or you yeah. actually know them socially? No, I I recall looking at this lady who was sat um, mm. a few seats in front of me, and she sort of held my gaze for a while in a way mm. that I thought maybe was a uh, you know she it was a recognizing mm. one. But I didn't obviously acknowledge it because you don't. Want what was to. she like? She was qu really quite attractive. Really? Yeah. Any other distinguishing factors that could she give away whether she looked like a um, a less mousy uh, Jodie Foster? Right. Um, she was uh, very beautiful, and that's annoying that she's got a fiance there. Mind you, I am married with three children, so <laughs> yeah. And you've already got the Icelandic <laughs> model lined up. I'm just you're, trying to keep my options open. Unfaithful list is getting longer by the week. <laughs> so what I did though was I. I responded on the um, on the little scrap of paper. You responded it. Yes, I responded it. Yes, with uh, a green pen. I circled the correct spelling of Stephen, which is of course S T E P H. -E green, the color of passion. That's right. I think it's envy, isn't it? Uh, and then I, you know, signed my name underneath and, and said, And what, what did you do much. with it? Well, I just left it there. I didn't know exactly. You who just to left it on the table. Deliver it to. Yeah. So she must have walked off without it. So it's still there, probably. Do we know her name yet? No, it's too much text to fit on. Fair enough. Do you think it would be fun to build up a long list of, of married women <laughs> that, w that want to sleep with you and you want to sleep with them? <laughs> on the understanding that, that you would never do it. Yeah. But it might be psychologically comforting just to know... I could use it in arguments with you my wife. You could use it in arguments? <laughs> you, could, you could think... If you just had a trying day with the family... Yeah. You could think, oh alternatively <laughs> you know in reference to that life right alternatively 
I could sleep with any one of these people. That's and it what would be it must a be like escape. for Gary Barlow or someone like that. It's Gary Barlow's doing the speaking clock at the moment. Is he? Yeah. Taking over exciting. from Tinkerbell. It's a comic relief thing. I just thought okay. I'd drop that in. Thank you. But you think that's what it's like for Gary Barlow? Yeah. Why? Because he's married but yet lusted after. And Robbie Williams and people like that, he must have just sackfuls of male. Women from... find a, a married men more attractive than single men because they're less threatening. You know, you don't have to do anything about it. Yeah. And also it's more exciting and transgressive hmm. if, if you end up having a dalliance. That's interesting. So why not? Uh, if you are interested in having a relationship with Adam, but at the same time would be comforted in the knowledge that it would never actually happen, yeah. do let us know. The email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. You could maybe describe what you would do, how the liaison would work, where mm. you'd go. You could even become erotic in some of your descriptions, <laughs> even though, remember, this is a Saturday morning show, so be um, circumspect, you know, use analogy and metaphor as much as possible. Yeah. Um, we'd be happy to receive those those texts, and I'm sure they'd help Adam's marriage immensely. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to launch Text the Nation very shortly, listeners, so stay tuned for that. But right now, here is Ian McNabb with Mersey Beat. That's Ian McNabb with Mersey Beast, not Mersey Beat, okay? He's changed it. He's done a little flip on it. Mersey Beast. It's time now to launch Text the Nation. Here's the jingle. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Now, Text the Nation this week, listeners, this is the part of the show, incidentally, if you're a first-time listener, where we talk about a thing, a subject, and then we ask you, our listeners, to text or email your thoughts thereon. Uh, that's it, really. It doesn't really need more explanation than that. In the past, we've proffered more explanation, but there's no time anymore for more. <laughs> <laughs> We're running out of time. There's only an hour and 40 minutes left. Yeah, exactly. So we've, we've got to keep keep the whole thing moving. Now, this week we are talking about sources of domestic irritation, domestic disturbances, let's call them, okay? And these are things that tend to annoy you about cohabiting, whether you're cohabiting with a married wife person that you are married to, or a husband, a husband, or uh, like other people, if you're students and you're living together, any kind of domestic disturbances that arise from cohabiting, irritations. Here are some examples for you. I've got a big problem with dishwashers, right? Right. I can see Joe's heart sinking. You don't <laughs> like talking about no, this. No, no, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a big dishwasher battle going on in our house. Right? I, don't, I don't like to use the dishwasher. I yep, would rather yep, yep. clean up by hand and do a good job and, you know, polish those glasses and make sure they go back into the cupboard, sparkling in case we have guests so that I can just get them out and impress the guests mm -hmm. with the what, cleanliness what, of the what's glass. the problem the problem is that other people in the house think that it's a better idea to load them all into the dishwasher so they come out streaked with a kind of brown crust so your problem is that your wife uses the dishwasher yes <laughs> and you like to wash up by hand correct <laughs> and she refuses <laughs> <laughs> is this a bad idea for Texanation? No. She refuses to do the do it the way I want to. Because all the, all that happens is the glasses come out covered in the crust, and then I have to rewash them and polish them and put them back in the cupboard. Mm. How is that a labor saving device? I'm asking you. How is it a labor saving device if you have to wash them not once but twice in the second time? It sounds like you should just get a better dishwasher. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> but get, it's get not one my response. Cleans them properly. Or just wash them by hand. Does domestic disturbance. So hang on, how does that flare up? Does that has that flared up into an argument? Many, many times. Really? Yeah. And and I I keep trying to think of the way to say it without sounding like chippy or passive aggressive, but it's got to a stage right now where it's clearly an issue. So I say, "Hey, um I think maybe with the glasses, let's not put them in the dishwasher. Let's just do them by hand. Or if you want, I'll do them. I don't mind doing them. I know? would call this pathetic domestic <laughs> arguments. <laughs> Fair I enough. I think the addition of the word pathetic. But, like, the more pathetic, yeah. but yet the, the greater they flare up. Okay. I would have thought you would have been on the side of right because you're going to the greater effort. You're actually physically hand washing yeah. the dishes, you would right? Think. Uh, how can your wife complain about that? Well, exactly. How can she complain about you taking extra care unless 
you dilly dally and leave it all in great piles on the side maybe bide your time until you're going to wash them yeah. and they're a hideous eyesore that your wife just wants to clear away by putting them in the dishwasher so is she... that what happens <laughs> yes maybe, it is maybe it? sometimes and you actually don't really get round to doing the hand washing very often <laughs> now, i don't want to get into it with you as well here's another one um the to oh, we've got a toaster this is this is you've not got a toaster yeah it's, wow it's one of the toasters where you've got a handle to lower the bread into the toaster right right and then you set a dial for yeah. how long you like want one of a to. cafe you make toasted sandwiches You're right in it can you yeah you could do well no 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 i'm thinking of a different sort You're thinking of a different you know sort. what i mean don't you ollie yeah i hardly know yeah, that's a yes so we should explain incidentally that ollie is a then guest don't explain, don't explain about no. ollie no okay can't speak um anyway we've got one of these toasters where you lower the bread in mm. you set the timer for how long you want it to toast for right mm. so I, I often get my bread ready and lower it in there and start toasting and think i'll give it about three on the dial there this is exciting isn't it <laughs> and then i'm all excited about my toast i'm going to put some jam on there yeah and the dial stops and i uh raise the bread up it's completely cold still because the toaster was not plugged in. But I thought it was working because the timer is clicking away there. And someone in the You've house mentioned this before I'm has sure. unplugged the toaster and put the kettle in. And I don't care right. about the kettle. I don't have tea. I want toast, not tea. OK, do you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> so hang on what's that one they the, keep unplugging the toaster and i'm not say, aware of when it when you say they the only people in your house are, are your wife and children under six yeah seven to narrow it down it's my wife <laughs> it's your wife it's funny how everything on this show these days comes back to your wife <laughs> Well, what do you expect I we should have her in one week i live with her she's so, the only person i see she has to put up with me. I'd be interested to see whether there was a sort of change in your general manner and approach. It to there would be, yeah, there would be. If she was here. Yeah, it, it would be as if my parents were here. I would suddenly shut down. <laughs> there would be a tonal shift. I'm very shift. deferential, yes. Okay, so your wife insists on plugging in the kettle. You don't drink tea, do you? No. No, neither do I. Neither of us drink tea. Don't like hot drinks. She's a keen drinker. Loves tea. I don't like hot drinks either. No. It's one thing we have in common. Yeah. Uh, so she would be putting the that's understandable. She'd be putting the kettle in the whole time. Have you heard of um, sort of double plugs? Yeah, you know, you get two in one. Yeah, the double plug is. Uh, I know you're right. Then you're you could right, have them right. both plugged in, but it's double yeah, but sockets. I always I keep forgetting to buy them. We've got loads in the house, but they're all mm, occupied. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, give us another one. Here's here's another domestic irritation. Right, this happens a pathetic domestic irritation. A lot of a lot of these occur in the bathroom, right? That's a common place for flare-ups. Yeah, for dishwashing and toasting. No, but you know what I mean. Like, right. There's a lot of okay. problem areas in the bathroom. The most obvious being raising or not raising the seat on the lavvy. That right. causes a lot of problems with married right. couples and any cohabitors of different sexes. But my big problem is with the electric toothbrush. Mm -hmm. I insist on the toothbrush being correctly rinsed after use and replaced well, now, hang in on. the you, charger you have one between the two of you and then a head e each no we were married we you use the same brush yeah yeah you brush your both mouths with the same brush yeah now <laughs> is that common listeners i don't know i mean i'm on what? my own here but i've, I've to me that sounds We've got three children we've odd. shared fluids on many occasions mm. it's not a big problem mm. for mm. us to brush our teeth i don't know listen <laughs> i'd be interested to know listeners but ollie does that sound normal to you ollie no. does he's 21 <laughs> what does he yeah, know about look at his teeth man and he cohabits i think i've never heard of that before really yeah do you reckon most married couples would have two electric toothbrushes yes i, didn't. I mean because you're married doesn't mean that you're symbiotic oh biologically yes, it does. well no what if you had a cold and she didn't want to get it or you had any kind of disease that was contained in your body we all get everything that's what it's well like. clearly <laughs> <laughs> well you may have found the reason right anyway keep keep going anyway, anyway, share the toothbrush we share the toothbrush <laughs> she fails to rinse the toothbrush properly right. and large deposits of toothpaste <laughs> start building up around for ex for one she overloads the brush <laughs> grotesquely right and that's she, true you only need a pea-sized bit of toothpaste little... it can be very bad for you actually that's right she overloads it mm. so not only is there oozing crusty deposits of toothpaste oh, not on the brush deposits again. <laughs> <laughs> we've only just got over your ball roller or whatever it was the other week <laughs> the deodorant the deodorant 
but also <laughs> there's drips that come down onto the sink, right? And they harden on the side what of the sink. What are we talking about now? Toothpaste. Okay. And there's blobs of toothpaste that go onto the side of the sink that drip down once she's overloaded the brush. Right. And they get all hardened. I have to uh, knock them mm. off there and scrape them off. It's a living nightmare! <laughs> <laughs> I don't... The thing about this text the nation is, um... It just feels like uh, you airing yeah. marital problems. Well, let's see. Well, I might be wrong. Maybe no one will it, maybe, take part maybe in text the nation this week. Should be just what's what is eroding your relationship if you're married? No, come on. I believe that other people have these kind of domestic mm. irritations if they're cohabiting. Mm. Right? Let's find out. If absolutely no one texts in, then no, we I'm can, sure they will. I'm sure they will. Then we can narrow it down. The text number is listeners. Oh, it's 64046. That's 64046. The email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. And that's an ampersand, not the word and between the Adam and the Joe. Okay, now just before the news, we have a, a short free play for you. This is from the band of Montreal, and it's from their new album, Skeletal Lamping, which is a kind of a long concept album. All the tracks merge into one another, so it has a very abrupt ending uh so don't be upset when that happens listeners this is called and i've been a bloody shadow stop you see that's quite a weird one isn't it but i really enjoy that album that's of montreal from their album skeletal lamping this is adam and joe here on bbc six music it's just gone ten thirty. time for the news oh, that's very good isn't it well done susie and the banshees from 1981 that was spellbound this is adam and joe here at the big british castle on six music yeah now we've been away for the last couple of weeks and it's my fault because I had to go to America to work. It was a, t a terrible chore. It wasn't. It was brilliant. While I was out there, I watched some telly, mm. and one of my favourite programmes was on on American television. Monster Quest. Wow. Have you heard of Monster Quest? No. Uh, here is a little uh, audio description of Monster Quest. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Mm. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. <laughs> yeah, monster, monster quest. quest. Monster quest. That's not a monster. One of, one of the sounds in there was just a plane. That's not so much. There a was monster. a plane. That was the t scientists searching for the monsters. Oh. There was the sound of a gun, a, tr a gun clicking. Right. Right. A, 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 a gun being cocked. I thought maybe there was someone saying, "I seen a monster. It's like a big flying bird, a metal one." No, it's just a plane. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then there was also the sound of a lot of fluid being released right. <laughs> towards the end of that. Is that you? Those are the kids. No, that's someone who's seen a terrifying monster. <laughs> monster Quest is a serious documentary series on the History Channel about mythical beasts. Cryptozoological. Yeah, and um, scientists searching to try and find out the truth. And we know from previous Song Wars and having chatted to you, Joe Cornish, yeah. that you love the cryptozoology and in particular you are in love with bigfoot i do i am passionately in love with bigfoot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i was very excited to see this new series of monster quest and i was a fan of series one my favorite show on series one was an episode called sasquatch attack mm. in which uh, a team of um, scientists went to an isolated cabin uh, next to a lake in canada a cabin that had been vandalized <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know. Either. A cabin that had been vandalised by a Bigfoot. The fridge had been ripped out, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, and so, in series two of Monster Quest, they decided to go back to this cabin with even more scientists and more equipment, and once and for all prove <laughs> <laughs> the existence of Bigfoot. You're laughing because of the fear, right? I think so. Because you're just gibbering with fear. So, this is the second clip. This is a synopsis of basically what happened in this episode of Monster Quest Series 2, and this particular episode was called Sasquatch Attack 2. Oof. Okay, here's the synopsis. At a remote fishing camp, something has unleashed its wrath. The refrigerator is ripped from the wall. When Monster Quest first investigated, a legendary creature may have turned up its aggression. This rock on the side of the building was... Bang! Now, Monster Quest returns with a new search, a new plan, and a new opportunity to analyze some of the most startling evidence collected. So the first time a mysterious invisible creature laid siege to the fishing hut, mm. uh, whatever it was, it pelted stones at the hut. So the owner put down, uh, the scientist put down a big board with screws in it to try and get this creature to step on it and leave some kind of uh, a residue or a sample. It did. <gasps> and they took that piece of tissue 
you know, Bigfoot tissue, yeah. by all accounts, uh, to a lab and had it analysed. They also found a hair and had it analysed. So in this second programme, not only are they returning to this hut to see if they can capture this creature on film, but they're also going to announce the results of the DNA analysis of the tissue wow. and the hair. They've had a whole year to get top scientists to analyse this extraordinary Sasquatch evidence. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? It is exciting. And let's not forget what this is all about. Let's just remind ourselves of, of, of the monster that they're questing to prove is this sentence working to mm. prove its existence questing of. to prove its existence, <laughs> existence of. of this is the monster the creature described by some to be hair covered six to ten feet tall it has 17 inch feet long arms and is capable of shaking a fishing cabin to its foundation it fits the historical description of a sasquatch it's mm -hmm. ollie it could be ollie it could be you <laughs> it could be me it could be either of you so how exciting yeah you know i i was settling down for an amazing evening's television that the, the, the follow-up to one of my favorite documentaries and they don't address the possibility that it could be say teenagers or no because this fish no because this fishing village is this fishing hut is very isolated right they repeat over and over again that it's only accessible by flying plane okay uh so no that's completely out of the question it could be alex james that's yeah <laughs> that, well they yeah they, they don't consider that actually right. so first of all they bring a, a huge amount of equipment mm -hmm. um and they have some special techniques to try and lure the sasquatch out of the forest um so let's have a little uh, hear the description of what equipment they bring mm. The team plans to use a three-pronged approach. Infrared cameras mounted on the cabin, camera traps hidden around the perimeter of the forest, and audio and video recorders that will be running continuously. The team will deploy another attractant in an effort to lure the creature in. Gorilla urine collected during the menstrual cycle. Oh, well, I know I always find that very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they've got, they've got night vision cameras all around the camp. They've got them strapped to trees, they're activated by movement, and they've got menstrual gorilla urine yeah. as a bait. Delicious. How can that fail? Yeah, you would think. So they, they also construct a hide, they monitor everything very carefully for seven nights, <laughs> desperate to catch any evidence of the creature. And what do you think happened? Uh, I would say nothing. Well, let's hear what happened. As the minutes turn into hours, morning comes. Again without incident <laughs> night one without incident <laughs> no nothing happened yeah nothing okay but forget about that what happened to the analysis of well the... exactly forget <laughs> forget about the fact that seven nights went by and nothing happened there's the analysis of the tissue on the nail board and the hair yeah let's let's be reminded about the tissue first the owner of the cabin had laid out a bed of screws and it worked a 17-inch bloody footprint was left behind, 17. along with tissue. Yeah? With the bloody tissue? Not, no, tissue. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so they get top scientists to analyse the tissue, and guess what the results are? A uh, member of the cast of Skins. No, let's hear. The DNA that came from the material uh, uh, belongs to uh, fungi, so uh, we did not find any, uh, any animal uh, DNA. What, he's like a swamp? creature it's just fungus oh unfortunately it was just fungus so it's not actually animal dna but don't worry because there's the hair right yeah yeah yeah. the sasquatch hair <laughs> uh let's just get reminded about that the hair on the rod case from 2007 may still hold the answer could this hair belong to the creature that terrorized the cabin so <laughs> Uh, bear in mind, I've been watching this show for 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm clinging on to the hair, you know, no results with the hide, nothing with the tissue that's turned out to be fun fungi. <laughs> what about the hair? The hair, got it, my only hope is the hair. Can you guess what the results of the hair analysis were? That, uh, it was a dog or a wolf creature. Mm, wolf creature would have been good. This is the results of, of the hair analysis. This hair has been uh, artificially bleached, and it is a human head hair, most likely of a Caucasian. No, so it is a member of the cast of Skins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so after 45 minutes of Sasquatch documentary, this is a synopsis of, of the results. Morning comes, without incident. We did not find any animal DNA, and it is a human head hair. The past seven days have not yielded much. 
<laughs> <laughs> but TV is just full of these kinds of documentaries. It was the now. History Channel. Right. They made such a big fuss. They really made me think what they were, they had earth evidence. What did you think was going to happen? Do you think it was going to be, would you, you, you would have read about it in the papers if it was the program that finally revealed the existence of Sasquatch? <clears throat> you know, our friend Louis Theroux, uh, <laughs> telejournalist, asked me, we were talking about this a few months ago, and he, and he asked me, he said, Joe, what percentage of a chance do you think there is that Bigfoot actually exists, yeah. realistically? And I said, mm, five, six percent? And he looked at me just like he would look at an idiot in one of his documentaries <laughs> with a really withering look. And there was a short bit of silence and then he changed the subject. It's nice that you still believe though, man. It's one of the things I like about you. I was so excited about that documentary. I'm really sorry. Wasted my time. I'm so sorry. Here's some music. This is the Kings of Leon. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, it's Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe Show on BBC Six Music. Adam, can you describe the subject this week? Well, we decided it was pathetic domestic gripes. Yeah, things that cause big flare-ups between you and your cohabitees that are actually pretty petty. Um, and here are some texts that we have had in. Just before you read those out, I'll give you one more from my locker. Um, I get very upset about the fact that when I come down for breakfast sometimes, uh, the children have already been down and had their breakfast and they've left the milk out of the fridge and it's no longer chilly like I like it. And sometimes I get so upset about the fact that the milk is warm, which does not suit me for my cereal needs, that I get a cocktail shaker out and put ice in it and I shake the milk over the ice and then strain it through the cocktail shaker onto my cornflakes. Wow. Because then you get chilled milk, which is the way I want it, <laughs> not left out to oh get God. warm on the table. Terrifying. Is that too much to ask? No. <laughs> uh, certainly not. Here are some texts that have come in from listeners. Stu in Hull says, I nearly had a kung fu fight with my housemate as he keeps turning the heating up to 30 because he's got a phobia of damp laundry. That's a very good one. I have a lot of uh, grapples over the thermostat mm. in my house. Mm. People keep going up to maybe 25. <laughs> you like things cool, I know I that, like from, from our childhood. Yeah, I like You it. like windows open and chilliness. Yes, please. Like your milk. Yeah. Other people like warmth. What kind of people are these? Uh, who wins in, in that argument battle? Well, me, because I sneak down and turn the thermostat down. Really? Yeah. Here's one from Mem. The people I live with refuse to buy new vacuum bags, hmm. as no one wants to feel short-changed by buying some. So instead, we're, we're reusing the same tired old bag Oof. by sort of poking dirt out of it. That is grotesque. It I really sympathise. That's a horrible one. And it's probably very unsanitary. We did have an email from a doctor, a teeth doctor. I believe they're called dentists. And he pointed out that sharing a toothbrush is really a very bad thing to yeah, do, even did. if you're Where married. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to it and then I'll come back to it. Yeah. That's kind of a revelation after 10 years of marriage for me. <laughs> so mm. I've got to go out and invest in a new toothbrush now. Here are some more. Joe and Adam, my girlfriend has no regard for matching socks and is quite comfortable in wearing odd socks that aren't even the same colour. <laughs> this has irritated me to the point of despair and has resulted in me hiding her socks from her and issuing her with a matching pair each morning. I like the use of the word issuing. <laughs> as if you're in some kind of awful camp well. or, or <laughs> hospital. Yeah. And she's being given her pills. <laughs> uh, that's from Pete in Colchester. Totally sympathise, Pete. Really? That, that would make me very... Well, you know, well, I'm less trying to be quirky. No, I'm less fascistic about items of clothing. I think that's a personal decision. But I can relate to how those things flare up and become an issue. You know what I mean? The problem I have is when socks get stolen from my drawer and misused. I have some socks that I really look forward to wearing. The thick brown pair, they're so comfy. And when they turn up in somebody else's drawer, that is a cause of concern for me that... Uh, you know threatens yeah. to flare up into an argument here's one from una i do all the clothes washing drying and sorting but i'm not allowed to put away my boyfriend's clothes because in his words quote i don't fold them right huh. close quotes in particular the socks so i set his things to one side on top of the drawers where they pile up and get mixed up with his dirty clothes he then complains he can't find anything to wear mm. 
Anything yeah. to say about that one? Yeah, totally relate Whose to that. Whose side are you on there, Una or the boyfriend? Well, it's diff- It's difficult. I think Una's nice to be doing all the washing and stuff, because that's a massive chore. Who gets to do the washing in your house? Do you just do your own washing? Er... Uh, Mm, no, my girlfriend. Doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you really have to appreciate someone that's going to take oh, on yeah, that task. It's true, it's true. O- it's Ollie, anything to contribute? Get your car. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. We should explain to people who Ollie is, though, I, shouldn't no, we? No, I don't think no, so. Okay, it's fair fine. Enough. It's a mystery. Uh, no, I appreciate that. But the thing is that oh. that's one of the areas that my wife has really enriched my life in. One of the many areas I Clean should say. Clean clothes. And not only clean clothes uh, and a regular change of clothes, but she has shown me how to fold shirts. It's one of the things that I write most about her. It's lovely. Here's another one from Jason. My wife, Lorna, Jason's naming names, always insists on using my razors to do her legs. <laughs> That's a common one, isn't then it? Then she puts it back. Then, unbeknown to me, I have a shave with a ruddy, blunt blade. Arr! It's. I mean, that's almost a cliche of domestic problems. You see that in lots of sitcoms and stuff like that. But it's true. It's one of the massive ones. It's like leaving the toilet seat up. It, and it's deadly. Deadly. Mm, 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 mm. You know, you can rip your whole face off like that just for the sake of a woman's smooth legs legs listen i think what we should do is have a record and i'm going to sort through because we have been inundated yeah. in these domestic problems with you. the domestic problems you. <laughs> and i'm going to have to sort through them to find some really good ones not that those weren't good and we should say the lady who um uh emailed us in earlier her, her boyfriend was called jason her fiance oh yes uh, in fact, no, she was the person who saw you on the train, right? This is the lady who wrote a little note to me on the train yes, while I yes. was sleeping. She would like to make it clear that she is very, very much in love with you, Jason. And in no way does she, is she interested in any sort of relationship with oh. Adam. And she, it's just an idle, pathetic frippery. And she she loves you and is really... How insecure is Jason, though? This well, is... well he must, it must have been quite worrying for him. It's like that girl on Big Brother from Liberty X who was all worried that her boyfriend was going to be upset yeah, she was ben. flirting with Ben. Uh, well, she, she texted in to ask us whether we'd make that clear to Jason, that okay. in, in no way was that in, in Don't any worry, real, Jason. All right. I'm a sexy man. I occasionally share a train with your He's fiance. Not sexy. He's not sexy. <laughs> but I'm not going to make a move. It's all fine. Here's a free play. This is Valerie Carter with Ooh Child. It is the voice of the big British castle. It is the top of the hour. It's exciting and it's new. How do you do? Hmm. That is like a refreshing bath or shower. How would you uh, characterise the refreshing quality of that song? Oh, it's like a lovely hot toddy. It's like a delicious hot mm. toddy. Are you having some brandy in the toddy there? No, it's uh, European hot chocolate made from real chocolate flakes. Ah. Oh. That's the only hot chocolate worth drinking. Oof, delicious. That was David Bowie with Kooks, and before that you heard Valerie Carter with her cover of the Five Stair Steps Ooh Child. Don't look at me for that one, mate. Wouldn't know. Yeah, that's, but what, it was, that's uh, what it was. It was wicked. It's it was one of my really... favourites. It's from the film Over the Edge, starring Matt Dillon. My favourite film of all you time. Love that film. Mm, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Ollie, you were asking yeah. about our favourite films. How Have... you doing there, Ollie? Uh, he's, yes, he uh, is he, doing. He's there. Have you seen Over the Edge, Ollie? No. I haven't seen that no, one. It's out on DVD in the UK now. Out on DVD in the UK, yeah. It's only been out for about eight months. Listeners, if you're so. confused about the references to Wally, this is a chap that emailed us a few weeks ago and asked if he could come into the programme and said that he would s- sit in silence. He he's... said he didn't want to say anything. Right. So we've taken him at his word. He's in the studio, but he's not allowed to speak. Instead, he's brought in a frying pan and a wooden spoon in order to communicate. One tap means yes, two means no. But at the very end of the show, at about three or four minutes to noon we are going to have ollie speak Mm -hmm. so that's something worth uh tuning in for and if you want to see ollie's face or at least the back of his head you should be able to on the webcam there ollie in fact if you'd like to spin your chair around did we establish which webcam it was ben is it that one or okay it's that one and maybe ollie if if you wouldn't mind just get comfortable and just look into the camera for the next three or four minutes stand up mind stand up ollie and just l- keep looking at the camera. Don't look round. Just keep looking at the camera as yeah. if you've been bad. You have to stay there for a while because it refreshes every minute or something. So you don't look round. Genuinely, you've got to stay there for a couple of minutes. Keep standing there as if okay. don't move. He's moving. Ollie, stand very still. Otherwise, it won't work because it's a still image that it takes. It's not like yeah. constant. Thank, thank you, Ollie. Well done. 
Uh, we're in the midst of Text the Nation, and this week's subject is things, pathetic domestic disputes you have with your cohabitees. The more petty, but yet divisive, the better. And we've been absolutely swamped with these things. We could do a book about this. We should do a book about this. Someone got in touch with us a while back to say, would we like to do a book of egg corns? And I just thought... Well, we're we're not really qualified. There's a big website um, called Egg Corns, Ollie, I think. Ollie sat down. Ollie, <laughs> Ollie, <laughs> was that doing? a minute? <laughs> no one told you, you you could sit down. What's the young people not have any strength in their legs anymore? If you're doing too much, many horse tranquilizers, is it? Stand, stand oh. up and look in the webcam. And look in the webcam, please, until you are told <laughs> otherwise, young man. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, much attitude. So what I was saying is, yes, they they invited us to do a book of egg corns, and I I thought it would be fraudulent to do so, really, because I don't feel that we, you know, we didn't feel invent egg corns Ollie. or anything. Ollie, you just stand there and look at the camera. Is that <laughs> so gonna... hard? <laughs> you <laughs> wanted to come in and feel the magic. Here's the magic. <laughs> look at the camera. <laughs> 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 i want to look at the camera and see his face we can't see his face now because his back's to us just stay there for a minute and then you can sit down all right <laughs> uh so anyway i don't know about the egg corns thing you know there's a, br a brilliant yeah. website full of egg corns listen you're tangential i'm going off the thing yeah but yes we could do a, we could do a book about domestic irritation right so here's one of them uh don't forget to put your name if you text you don't have to if you want to remain anonymous which would be understandable in this context okay here's one from an anonymous texter our domestic bliss is being ruined by my fiance magda's failure to grasp the concept that bathroom cupboard doors natural resting state is closed <sighs> Ever since I fitted new push catches, yes. she keeps leaving them slightly ajar, rendering the spring mechanism of said catches. <laughs> I now find myself... That doesn't make sense, that last sentence. Never mind. Maybe, is I now find myself sneaking into the bathroom after her every visit, like some store-covered Stasi, to ensure she shut the doors correctly. <laughs> this is really bugging me, and we've not ever reached the marriage... Not even reached the marriage stage yet. So she's leaving them open? Yeah. And he's having to creep in and close them? Yeah. You know what? It's dangerous as well. He's saying, we're due to get married in May. Do you think it would be a good idea to get a prenup drawn up to address this issue? Definitely. Definitely. I think, Ollie, you can, you can sit down now. Can sit down now, Ollie. Well done. Good I think if, if people haven't seen you by now, then that's too late. <laughs> He's looking very pleased with himself. No boo. Um, yeah, no, that's, a, that's an important one. And all, the worst one is in the kitchen as well when cupboards get left open and you're bending yeah, down, yeah. you're doing a little bit of Slam your head toast on. work and you very dangerous rear up and you can get the corner of the door oh, right in the forehead there. that's dangerous that's tantamount to your partner trying to kill you yeah and th that's something that does happen the call the police yeah magda is going to be arrested come on Magda. here's one from Put neil in up. nottingham my girlfriend has no concept of towel etiquette rather than having a couple of towels in rotation <laughs> which can be used a couple of times before being replaced by a clean one from the airing cupboard she uses at least three towels every morning which she leaves in a damp trail around the bedroom. And then who has to pick them up? Easy. And put them in the washing? Hey, hey, hey easy, Adam. <laughs> this isn't you. Rather than using these towels again the next day, she'll head to the airing cupboard and pluck three fresh ones out with complete disregard for the rotation system. Oh, this sake. results in our house being constantly scattered with damp towels, and we've no idea how long each towel has been in rotation and whether it's due for a wash. You cow! Driving me mad. I thought you were going to say something else then. <laughs> would have been a very brave way to end our <laughs> tenure here at the BBC. That would have got the front page of the Daily Mail. <laughs> quite a good way to go. <laughs> um, yes, well, honestly, Neil, we can only sympathise. That's appalling. You probably, uh, do you have separate towels, Adam, what, with your toothbrush sharing stuff, or do you happily rub your bits and bobs with whatever comes to hand? <laughs> <laughs> No answer required. We use toilet paper. Here's another one which is very well um, presented and written. It's anonymous. It says simply this, and there are capitals and lowercase in this text, so I'm going to illustrate the capitals by shouting. Okay. He hides my hairdryer in the toy box. <laughs> he makes me use a plate if I eat a banana. He puts chocolate in the fridge. <laughs> is this uh, a woman complaining about a man? Nobody knows. Right. It could be a gay couple. Uh-huh. It could be a heterosexual couple. Makes me use a plate if I eat a banana. Oh, that is... Now, that seems pedantic, because, you know, 
bananas come with like uh, serving suggestions chocolate God, in serving the fridge suggestions. i think chocolate in the fridge is okay it adds a little special something they to used it. to promote that didn't they yeah uh, cabris or whatever they used to promote chocolate as a summer snack that's that right you'd store in the fridge snickers so, in a chiller uh, you got any snickers in a chiller that's that. what it used to be like in the old days this is from paul <laughs> my girlfriend cassie insists on having the toilet roll dispensing sheets over as opposed to next to the wall However, she re rarely replaces the roll onto the holder, choosing instead to balance it on top of the cardboard remains of the old one. She refutes this and insists she does. Mm. Mm. You know, that drives me mad as well. It doesn't take a second just to reload the roll. Yeah, but then to put the used roll in the recycling. That's a bit of a journey, isn't it? Or make something out of it, a robot. In most houses, it's usually a, quite a distance between the loo and wherever the recycling bag is, right? Well, you have a little receptacle there, <laughs> a temporary recycling receptacle in, in the bathroom. The bathroom. Where your uh, loo roll things go. Yes. Is that what you have? Uh, no, I generally make <laughs> no. the trip to the recycling bin. It's not so very far. It's a fun trip. Really? You, you would make a whole trip just for that one little yes, tube? Would. <laughs> you know what? So would I. Ollie? Ollie would yes, too. Yes, he'd do too. We Any all do that. Very good. Would. There you go. Paul, Are there your things girlfriend that get is wrong. put in your fridge, incidentally, talking about the chocolate in the fridge, mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. get outraged by? Someone in our house puts the ketchup in the fridge. Oh, well, my girlfriend likes that a lot. I she don't likes like ketchup. cold ketchup. <laughs> no, because then you're going to... It's a weird clash. you got your... Uh, fish fingers there, and suddenly the ketchup comes out and chills out the fish fingers. That's no good. This doesn't annoy me, but my girlfriend does chill, uh, squash. Uh-huh. Which seems to me a bit stupid, because you're gonna dilute it anyway. Oh, what, the actual concentrate mm, you mm, chills? Mm, mm, That's mm, madness. Mm. That's a bit silly, but I don't get angry about it. No, no, you should. <laughs> should I? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna build up a head of steam over that one. We'll be back with more, uh, texts very soon. Now here's a trail. You were doing your, uh, disgruntled granddad look there. I just didn't think this, that was Radiohead. That's sort of I'm not used to their noisy tracks. That's from the Benz, I think, isn't it? My eye and lung. Oh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and we are in the midst of text the nation. Yeah. What about a bit of jingleage, Ben, to orientate us? Yeah. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. It doesn't matter. Text. And this week we're asking you for pathetic things that your cohabitee does around the house that make you go mad with fury. Mm. You know, um, do you want a uh, name drop? Not really. No, I thought better of it, actually. Really? Just as I, I, as soon as I opened my mouth, I thought about it. I, th I thought there's no point whatsoever in dropping this name. It's ridiculous. Well, you should do it now. <sighs> well, it's so... Oh, I wish I'd never... Okay, let's not do it, then. Okay. Let's not do it, then. No name drop. Was it to do with the textination subject? Kind of. Kind of, but only tangentially. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, so let's tenuous. Not bother, then. No. You know, I've been finding it difficult to think of things that wind me up uh in a bit of a squeaky clean way you know about it my cohabitation like paradise it is it there. is paradise she's, she's a lovely lady but but something someone sent in has um, reminded me of something that really annoys me yeah about my beautiful lovely cohabiting lady friend this is an email from stephen in norwich uh he says hello adam and joe my new housemate yawns like a trapped bear hmm. often waking me up in the middle of the night or interfering with my enjoyment of the telly he says it's because he lived on his own for too long should I ask him to be more discreet by placing a hand over his mouth? Oh, sure. All the best, Stephen. Now, that's something that my lovely lady partner does. Mm. She goes, Ooh! A lot. Well, it's very contagious, is the other a thing. Lot, a lot. Though. A lot. A lot. And after a while, it feels like she finds life as a whole boring. A bit boring. She's just, it feels like she's just tired of life, of existence. She needs more oxygen in her mixture. Maybe she does makes me feel insecure i think i'm not being exciting enough right you know she's weary she's we exactly you know it, it makes her sound world weary mm -hmm. and she's not at all and it annoys me well she works very hard though and maybe not she gets anymore. up early mm, she does do that yeah uh that's true though Stephen. that's annoying what do you think sh Stephen should do i think what Stephen should do is do what my dad used to do with our cat mm -hmm. every time it yawned which is pop something in the mouth Right. when it's wide open <laughs> my dad would just pop his finger in the cat's mouth and then enjoy the look on its face when its jaws closed go, oh, <laughs> and found a finger there so that's a good thing to do when your friend yawns just pop something in nothing they'll choke on no listeners we don't want to encourage that kind of thing no little marbles maybe a pen 
laterally in the mouth, like, well, some, like so. Well, you could do it something nice. You could pop <laughs> a little nice. Malteser in there or something. I thought you were going to say something else <laughs> for a moment. But yawning is a good one, though, isn't it? And it is, it's very contagious. Even people hearing you doing that yawn there mm. will start yawning themselves. Well, but themselves. fake yawns aren't contagious. They are. Are they? Yeah. I, th I always thought you had to do an authentic yawn for I can feel contagious. a yawn coming on just talking about really? it. Really? Yeah. Here's another one from Simon. He says, Morning, Adam and Joe. I used to go spare when my ex-housemate used to come down from the shower and sit on the sofa for a few minutes in his wet towel, always leaving a moist, arse-shaped patch for a good couple of days. That's a disgrace. That is a disgrace. Ugh. How old? What are these people doing? That's nice, though. I can feel... I've got a sense memory of a wet towel on my bottom right now. Oh, no. It's Why is nice. that good? That's horrid. It's nice. And you should not go wandering around <laughs> other parts of the house before you're properly dry! Yes. Go on, give me some more. I love these. More, more, more. Okay, here is one <laughs> so from cathartic. Louisa. She says, I have these lovely pastel enamel pans that mm. were a wedding present. My husband never uses the silicon spatula for stirring things in these, but uses forks which scratch the enamel. <laughs> Perversely, he then uses the special spatula to stir things in the frying pan, which melts it. Oh, dear. You know, I would probably be guilty of abuse of pans in my house. Mm. Sometimes mm. I got a lovely Teflon pan, <laughs> a beautiful non-stick surface there. But... Uh, I want to get it so clean that I sometimes just use a scour on it, like a, um, wire Yeah, that's wall. wrong. You damage it. That's really bad. You damage it. I'm scraping off the Teflon surface there. Here's a text from Matt, who says, My wife always leaves the understairs cupboard door open, so I took it off and burnt it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Matt. That's very good. At which point I think we should play some music and come back to Textination a little okay. later on. Here's a free play for you now, listeners. This is The Only Ones, and I'd always been aware of The Only Ones, right? They were a great band from the 70s, late 70s. They were sort of around in the punk world, but they sounded very different. They're a little bit like Joe Jackson, maybe more... I don't know, it's hard to describe. They sound like Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. I'm going to play you some, obviously, right now. But they reissued their seminal three albums recently, and this one is a track from Even Serpents Shine. They're a revelation, though. These albums are amazingly good. This track is called You've Got to Pay. That's nice, isn't it? That's very good, isn't it? Peter Perrett there with the only ones. And You've Got to Pay. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Do you want to hear about my earthquake experience? Do you have an earthquake experience? Yeah, I was in an earthquake. In, in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. yeah. Me and Simon Pegg, the popular actor, went to the cinema. Nice name drop. Thanks, mate. It's not really a name drop, it's just a statement of fact. <laughs> right? Yeah. Unlike your ones that are lies. We went to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even On the one. Third Street, it's preemptive. On the Third Street Promenade, near Santa Monica, in Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah. And we went to see My Bloody Valentine in 3D. Ah. Yeah, awesome film. Good times. Not really. And just before the film, we were sitting in the cinema, there were these relentless horror film trailers. Uh, a remake of Last House on the Left. Right. Something called The Uninvited. The remake of Friday the 13th. They were all the same and they were all terrifying. Mm. They were just montages of teenagers screaming and being hacked to pieces. Terrifying words floating around in on a misty screen Oof. you know weird elliptical lines of dialogue and shouts and screams and Sounds noises like all and those bangs trails in grindhouse it was a little like that but it uh, not as good mm. and also the surround sound was so powerful that it felt as if it was an earthquake anyway yeah and at the climax of these three interchangeable increasingly troubling trailers suddenly there was an enormous boom it felt like they were showing the loudest action film ever made in the next door cinema. Right. But it was so visceral. And uh, we experienced one in Tokyo, didn't we? Did yeah. you remember that earthquake? But that was, that was not accompanied by a noise. It was just a. No, it was an increasing shuddering. vibration. Yeah. This one was like an explosion. It was as if a plane had gone down or a bomb had gone off. Wow, how frightening. And uh, everyone's seat jolted and everyone was really unsettled. And suddenly everyone in the cinema turned and looked at each other in a way that wouldn't happen under any other circumstances, I don't think. Yeah. Suddenly everybody wanted to make human contact, eye contact. Yeah, hold hands. And there was a long pause, a long silence. And then someone said... And somebody said, Steven? Earthquake going down! Oh, right. That's it. Uh, but it was very exciting, and the film really didn't live up to it. I didn't earthquake. know that earthquakes were accompanied by booms and... Yeah, well, I mean, this, I think we were very near the epicentre. It was very exciting. Wow. Yeah, and that'll probably be the headline in the news. Yes. Let's find out. Here is the news. That is Mykonos by Fleet Foxes. Is that their current single, then? No, uh, is it? Well, that was one of their first singles. It was the EP they released when they first of all came out, right? 
and it's now been re-released. Ah, and they've yeah. actually, I picked up a CD of theirs in Amoeba Records in LA uh -huh. that I haven't played yet. Ooh. But oh, they're so popular, they're kind of releasing everything they've ever recorded. Yeah. And they've discovered another four tracks. Well, they were quite good from the get-go, weren't they? They arrived mm. fully formed, musically mm. speaking. Mm. So you can't really go wrong with them. Yeah, well, so. I'll check them out and listen to them, and if they're good, I'll play one next week. It's time to wrap up Text the Nation. Let's have the jingle one more time, Ben. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. It doesn't matter. Text. Text the Nation this week, listeners, is about uh, domestic friction caused by very petty things, household Quite, things. I think very petty is putting it too strongly. <laughs> Some of these are very valid complaints. And these are all springing from a terrifying, yet another terrifying glimpse inside the domestic arrangements of Mr. Buxton. It does sound horrible, the picture I paint of my no, home life, doesn't you it? No, know, it's mitigated by your honesty. The fact that you're so candid about them shows that you're uh nature is Psychotic. so uh, no so open <laughs> that all these problems aren't really a problem i hope so you know i do love my wife and my family very much and i wouldn't like anyone to think otherwise but i wish she would just pay attention to some of my valid points about the dishwasher what you want to do is start wearing uniforms around the house that's a good idea uniform for you a uniform for her little uniforms for the kids <laughs> <laughs> and a proper hierarchy medals yeah and stripes what kind and... of uniforms i'm thinking orange boiler suits mm, well, that's a bit space age isn't it i was thinking more nazi <laughs> type, <laughs> right th yeah type thing well i don't think that's a good that's way not go. suitable is it that gets you into trouble <laughs> that sort of talk these days but you know what i mean i was saying in jest but yeah. I, I would be more officious about Carol it than maybe Thatcher. you would be <laughs> hey it's more prince harry okay here is one that has come in from an anonymous person and this is one I sympathise with a lot. Mm. When going to bed, my girlfriend manages to slip out of all her clothes in one smooth movement. Like it. This results in little piles of clothes dotted on the bedroom floor with her bra inside her T-shirt, both inside her jumper, on top of her jeans. Very <laughs> similar to her being vaporised by a ray gun in a 70s sci-fi <laughs> series, with her clothes as the only thing that remain hanging in the air before falling to the ground. My girlfriend does exactly the same. Why would that be irritating? Because you have to pick them up and you have to sort of pull them out of each other. And it is... It, there is something weird that's a very good description that she's been vaporized yeah it would just be nice to think that somebody before they went to bed took the articles of clothing off one by one and then folded them up neatly and put them away well you know what my wife sometimes does is pull off her clothes and so they end up inside out and then puts them in the washing bin in that, All tangled in that state up. so when i do the wash and i get them out of the machine it's up to me to put them all the right way around again mm. and i have to mm. reach inside a damp tube sleeve you know what i'm saying and and pull it the right way out it makes me furious i, I think what that anonymous texture is skirting around is the idea of taking off the trousers or stroke skirt and the pants stroke knick knocks mm -hmm. simultaneously and the f and, and if you imagine what sort of a sort of puddle of <laughs> clothing that leaves on the floor a sexy one and what you're yeah kind of yeah oh it's not an area you want to go into on a saturday morning show really no but you can imagine oh i see okay yeah. carry on yeah here's one from liz that's come in via text my partner pete will not let me share his pillows if i pile them up high under my head and he's already got up he comes up and pulls the extra pillows away and puts them back on his side with eastenders-ish criminal intensity <laughs> this inflames me my partner then i <laughs> then i insist on having the pillows back well oh my computer just shut off. He even bought me more pillows, but it's no good. It's his pillows I want. <laughs> Why won't he let me share them? Says I, Liz. I don't want anyone to... I have a particular pillow that I very much favour, and if anyone's going to start moving it to their side of the bed, they can expect a fight. What do you favour about the pillow? It's very squishy. It's not too large. You know, I like my head to be fairly close to the mattress, so it's one that is sufficiently squidgy that I can hollow it out and it, it, it makes a nice little hole for my head that I can fit in there. And, uh, you know, the other pillows on the bed, they're much too fulsome. I don't like them. Here's one from Andy in Hartlepool. I organised the shoe cupboard, giving myself a little area. <laughs> to my horror, the girlfriend invaded my space. I asked her not to invade my space, <laughs> and we ended up not talking for two days. 
and in Hartlepool. You read it in that voice, though. Yeah. And he's probably a very reasonable guy. No. And he doesn't talk like a, a Nazi robot. You, when you start a sentence, I organised the shoe cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Comma. <laughs> don't, <laughs> has to be read in that voice. Don't belittle the legitimate gripes of Andy in the shoe cupboard. Yeah. You know what? I think that's all I've actually prepared. I could read some random ones out that I haven't known. Ben's winding the whole thing up. We've only got a quarter of an hour and we still have to talk to Ollie the Wally before the end of the show. Hey! I'm not allowed to call him Ollie the Wally, am I? Poor, he's taking it very well. Ollie, <laughs> Ollie, is. He, Ollie ain't no Wally. I've never seen anybody less Wallyish. No, he's cool. For certainly. you to call <laughs> him a Wally is very much pot kettle black, that's if you true, ask me. It? It's time for trail. <laughs> I never heard all the little things going on in the background there. Just that was the Fine Young Cannibals with, what's that actually called, that single? Uh, Johnny Come Home. There you go. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, as we explained earlier, we've been joined in the studio by a guest. It's a very rare occurrence for us here on this programme. We don't mm. normally have guests We've had Chris Salt, the Salt Man, the, the winner man. of the Video Wars competition. Yep. We've had S Lord Roger Moore. Yeah. Uh, is that it? Lord Sir Roger, yeah, that's... Garth Jennings. Yeah. Has sat in for me when I've been away. Uh -huh. So you are officially the fourth guest... We have ever had Wally. Please don't speak yet. Well, he, we had the guy that did the remixing of the song oh, songs. that's absolutely right. Amber Gambler. Yeah. Um, so you're the fifth. But, you know, in many ways, you're the most skilled of all the guests. With your frying pan <laughs> tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie emailed us uh, three or four or five weeks ago saying he'd like to come into the studio and feel the magic, but he didn't want to say anything. So we took him at his word. He was on the phone and he wasn't allowed to speak. He had to scratch the receiver. Now he is live in the studio, but he hasn't been allowed to speak at all. He's been viewable on the webcam um, and he's been communicating by tapping a frying pan with a wooden spoon. Um, but now, are we going to let him speak? I think we should. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is Ollie. Ollie, please say hello to the listeners. Hello. There we go. Uh, that's, that's, he sounds like Naboo. Now, Ollie, uh, you wanted to experience the magic rushing around the studio. Let me ask you, did you, before you came into the studio, did you have preconceptions of what it might be like? Had you painted a mental picture, with the emphasis on the word mental, had you painted a picture in your head? Um, hmm, or no. hadn't you thought about it? Hadn't no, really you just didn't. That much. Just, just yeah. uh, took it as it came. Yes. And um, now that you're here, is it is it is it as magical as you had hoped it would be? Yes, more magical. Describe some exciting things that you think listeners might want to know about the magic of this program. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really magical, and uh, he's uh, the boo. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine Naboo. Anything surprising, you know, anything surprising for people who might, you know, want to see through your eyes ab ab about the way Adam and I behave or the show is laid out or anything like that? No, it's all very organised and lovely. Now, Ollie, what do you do for a living? I'm a computer technician. Ah, compu you love computers. Yes. Do you love them more than people? Uh, yes. What's your favourite type of computer? Are you a Macintosh or a Windows, Windows. person? Right. Yeah. A weirdo. No. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your favourite band? Um, Just doing a quick interview with yes, Ollie. Nice here. man. Yeah. What's <laughs> your favourite uh, band? Probably Fleetwood Mac. Is that a serious answer? Yeah. You love the, uh, early Mac or late Mac? Mm, all of it, really. Bernie Mac. Did you like his work? Bernie Mac. Big yeah. Macs. Uh, yes. Um, w seriously, do you love Fleetwood Mac? Yes. I, I was talking to someone else the other day. Who was going on about early. What's the best album to get of theirs then? Uh, greatest hits. Greatest hit, seriously. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's great. It's yeah. got hits on. That's Fair the enough. only one I have. Favourite film we know is 28 Days Later. Uh, Favourite TV show? Comedy mm. show? Com uh, not comedy, but 24 probably. You like 24? Good new series, eh? Mm -hmm. Quite exciting. Yep. How about Lost? This is riveting. No. You should take over from Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I could Friday. do it easily. You'd be good. I would be excited. Why don't they ask major movie stars questions like that? What's your favourite band? Mac or PC? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living? I think it would be more interesting. It would, it would. General <laughs> fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much it. But Ollie, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. And we hope we, you don't feel as if you were mistreated or humiliated in any way, do you? No, not in any way at we all. We didn't mistreat or humiliate him enough. We shouted at him <laughs> to stand at the webcam, you but that did. was about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a great time. Thank you for having me. Good. No, not at all. You're very welcome indeed. Uh, you're never allowed to come back. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, keep keep away. And if I ever see you in the street or anything like that, I will uh, call the police. Yeah, and don't tell anyone any of the things we told you j between when the records yeah. were playing. Okay. Or don't tell anyone what we did together <laughs> 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 while the records were playing, please. Okay. Cheers then, Ollie. Uh, we're gonna play a little bit more music before we say goodbye to you now, ladies and gentlemen. And which one are we going to go for, Ben? Which it, one? PJ Harvey. PJ Harvey. Yeah, this is PJ Harvey with Sheila Nagik. PJ Harvey there. That's pretty much it for our show this week, ladies and gentlemen. A couple of weeks ago on the pre-record, we were talking about pop psychology, the notion that we might have a new feature, because we're giving Song Wars a little bit of a rest for a few weeks, and we need something else to, to fill the show with. And we were thinking that if people in bands would tell us their niggles, particularly people that aren't lead singers, right? If you're a bassist or a drummer or a keyboard player in a band, and you don't necessarily have to be like a massive well-known band, but we would really like to hear your problems within the structure of the band and some of the, you know, niggles that you have about that. And Joe, our residential pop psychologist, will give you some advice. I mean, we both mm. will, right? I'm a trained psychologist. Joe's a trained psychologist. That's and why I work with Adam. Nobody else <laughs> would be capable of enduring it. That's right. So we would really like to uh, encourage you if you're in a band to get in touch you can be anonymous you don't if you're in a famous band you don't have to say which one it is necessarily although you can tell us but we won't read it out on the we're air. talking about petty jealousies things that annoy you about other band members behaviors if yeah. if people are trying to hoggle the limelight push to the front during photo sessions trying to drown you out by turning that amplifier up higher mm. anything that is threatening to come between you if you're in a band the more anecdotal the better we'd like mm. you know little mm. stories about what it's like the email address is adam and joe dot six music at bbc.co.uk uh, you can email us at any point every single email is read by either me or adam um and that's it really thanks a lot for listening and thanks to everybody who texted for text the nation and who emailed in during the week yeah we got loads of really in enjoyable and interesting emails thanks a lot for those thanks to ollie for coming in once again Cheers, thanks ollie. ollie let's have a little frying pan goodbye from you um, oh he's put it in his bag in his forget bag. it forget it forget it forget it hey, hey. There you go. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. We'll, we'll see you next week. You next week, yeah. Take care. Bye.